It's the KSO Show, a Q&A edition. We haven't done these one of these in a long time, but we felt, you know, we're doing it right before Kansas State takes on Texas in basketball in Manhattan. Decided uh, today, you know, instead of be talking about basketball and having that lose its shelf life right away since the game's coming up and there's no, you know, football press conferences happening until March for spring football. So D.Y. and I decided to put out a board post, you know, late last night around 1130 and uh, get things going. And a lot of people have, have chimed in on the message board. If you have not subscribed to KSO yet, I suggest that you do. You can get on here and uh, get your question asked on these these podcasts. We answer your questions. And then, I mean, the most important thing is you be on the message board and on our website and get great information from Derek Young, myself, and Drew Galloway. We've been trying to pump out a lot of information you know, especially as of late, things have started to get back to normal every, every little bit, little by little. And uh, we're, we're excited to, you know, get to work and do a lot of things. So this edition will be a fun one. We just go through, we answer questions from the message board. Um, and I think we're ready to roll. DY, anything else you want to add before we get going? Uh, no. Cool. <laughs> okay. KU Sucks 83 uh, starts us off. With what area of improvement do you think Kyle Duke, Kyle Duke needs to make going into the 2021 season? Yeah, that's a good question. Khalid Duke is someone that probably just needs to learn how to play hard at all times. There's a difference between having a motor and playing hard at all times. And, and, and then there's another level. He needs to get to, to that other level and just, you know, continue to build out his frame, get stronger. We know he's fast, but it's everything else that kind of goes into the picture with him. Absolutely, I agree. I think he's still, yeah, he's got all the, the physical attributes to be a great uh, defender. He started every game last year when he was healthy. And uh, I think he's ready to take an even bigger step forward and, you know, prove that he could be a future NFL talent. Uh, so next we got little blue stem asking, uh, several questions here. He starts with, will the defense on next year's football team resemble the good defense of the first five games in 2020 or the last five games? It was pretty, uh, Jekyll, Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. So. Well, I, to me, I think the defense kind <clears> of <throat> withered away and, yeah. and, and became completely untethered once the secondary was, you know, desecrated. So without a desecrated secondary, I would have to think that the defense is going to be you know, at least probably more reflective of the defense from the first five games, to be quite honest. And I know a lot of people are like, well, what about the linebackers? What about the linebackers? I get that. But the linebackers were pretty poor, I thought, in 2020, probably for the entire entirety of those 10 games, um, the, the linebackers as a whole. Um, at least they were nothing better than average. And, and you can definitely there is an argument to be made that the, the defense was fine, even with average to below average linebacker play. They went – you know, completely was eviscerated once their secondary fell apart. So without a secondary that's fallen apart, I still would like to think that they would be more symbolic of, of the defense from the first five games. I think so too. And, you know, they made those additions that they needed to in the transfer portal that were huge in Julius Brents and Russ Yeast, both back there in the secondary that had played big, big time minutes at Power 5 schools in Louisville and Iowa. Uh, that should definitely help. As long as guys stay healthy, um, the back end is a little concerning. Because there was a lot of attrition, you wish you could have a guy like Will Jones as someone that can that could play the nickel as a backup or a starter. But uh, as a whole, I think uh, I think the the defense should look pretty good as long as injuries allow it. QB uh, next up, he says QB recruiting for the 2022 season is slow or sessions is slow. If the dead period gets extended again, what does recruiting that position look like without in person evals? And should we expect a lower rivals ranked QB to be chased compared to Rubley? Uh, I mean, Rubley is kind of the outlier so far. So I would think it's pretty simple to say that the the odds are even without the the extended dead period in pandemic that the quarterback is probably going to be lesser ranked than that of Jake Rubley. That's just what the odds were. So I, I would say so, yes. And in terms of if the dead period were to get extended, I'm not sure that it will from the sound of it. But if it were, then I you're just going to have, they're going to have to um, let that stubbornness fade away a little bit and offer guys anyway, even without any proper, you know, face-to-face -face evaluation. So, uh, and, and you might see that before April 15th. Anyway, they're going to have to offer new guys. I don't think that they're going to get Taven Jackson. Who's the only one that they've offered thus far. 
And I get, I be follow up question to that. They got Rubley. What what makes you think Taven Jackson's out of question? I mean, it's a, it's a it's pretty obvious to me. But for the ones that don't know out that out there, unless you want to leave that on the the message board, I, I just don't think that they have the connections or the ties to Jackson that they had for Rubley. And 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 the battle would be just as contentious. He has a you know a laundry list of offers mm-hmm. just the same way that Rubley did. And I mean, I wouldn't rule out that he ends up at a you know a top five program. Absolutely. He asks, why does Flando post so late? I just, you know... He's a nocturnal. Nocturnal. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a night owl. I really am. Um, and I love the board. I, I'm on the board all the time. And I, I just try to, you know, keep up with all you guys. So sometimes, uh, yeah, I, I think of a well-thought-out answer to something completely off-topic. And I'll put it on the board like I did last night. When it came to talking about, like, the weekend compared to, like, Michael Jackson. <laughs> but anyway, we're moving on. Could you rank the current football transfers that the team received in terms of their impact, you see? Yeah, that's a good question. I would put number one just because I think he might be the best of the five in terms of upside, and he provides three years of eligibility rather than one. So I would put one Julius Brents. Uh, two for me would probably be, hmm, who are we going to think here? Probably Rusty East because I think mm-hmm. he's going to start at safety, I and, and, and I think he's a pretty quality football player. As well, and, and there's an argument to be made that the secondary was the, probably the biggest area of need just because of all the guys that they did lose in the conference that they do play in. Yep. Number three for me would probably be I'm trying to think here. Eric Munoz, maybe? I mean, uh, probably go Timothy, Timothy Horn. Horn. Okay. I don't know how good Horn's going to be. So that's, mm-hmm. I'll preface with that. But defensive tackle was another area where they needed a massive body because you lose Drew Wiley. Yes, you bring Eli Huggins back, but I don't mm-hmm. know if we saw enough from Robert Hentz or Jalen Pickle to be quite comfortable yet. I think they have a chance to be uh, pretty good football players for the Wildcats, but I think they needed another guy, so maybe Horn at number three. Munoz at four, just because I don't know how good he's going to be either, but I do think that if he is the replacement for Justin Hughes, that there's a chance they're upgrading there, and the leadership value is probably more on the side of Hughes, mm-hmm. but I don't think Munoz is very far off, and they probably wanted someone in early because Devontae Pritchard is a true freshman linebacker that is enrolled early. And last would be Daniel Imaterbebe at tight end, and there's a chance that he maybe he's number one because he yeah. is a pretty good athlete if he's healthy, but the problem is we don't know how healthy he can stay because he hasn't really proved that throughout his career. Back to Timothy Horn, I have one follow-up question to that. Obviously, Gainis and Enaduke played a lot on the inside last year out of necessity. Do you think they're going to try to keep them on the outside more so this season and try to fill in guys like Timothy Horn and others? I mean, they might play inside on pass rushing situations, but mm-hmm. uh, they're probably mostly going to be on the edge. Yep. Uh, do you have your travel plans for Jerry World made yet? Yeah, obviously, K State and Stanford will be at uh, Jerry World in Dallas next season but we, no i don't think we do yeah we don't but we probably will and and maybe the not so distant future will be there the, but yeah we're not going to mm-hmm. miss a chance to cover a football game in jerry world and hopefully the hopefully rest- we both can get to go in there too with covid yeah <laughs> uh, i would imagine that the covid restrictions are pretty uh L- in Texas. Yeah, light at that point. That'll be in September, and that's a, you know almost eight months away from now. And obviously, Texas isn't as strict yep. um, in regard to that anyway. But yeah, we'll be there, and we're pretty excited. Absolutely. A couple more, or I guess one more from him. Uh, who are the players from the basketball team uh, that are the most critical to get to four conference wins next year? Now do the same question, excluding Pack and Bradford. So he realizes Pack and Bradford are definitely uh, in the conversation and probably the top two yeah. from uh, what you want in next year. I guess you'd want Dejuan next year, Selton. Selton, and I think that's really the main core you want. Yeah, it would be it would be Nigel Nigel Pack, Davion Bradford, Selton Miguel, and Dejuan Gordon. He asked us to pick four, not excluding in, not including two. Pack and Bradford. So you got Selton Miguel, Dejuan Gordon. I guess Casey Iziago for his his. I mean, I do like how he talks in in post game pressers. I like his his attitude and effort. I just don't know how good of a player need, he I is. I don't. I don't think they need that. I think. Though. I think they need talent. I think Luke Kazuki. I mean, if we're to, but that's the thing. After and after Pack and Bradford, there's not a ton yeah. Of there's not to because from. because Casey Iziago is good for the locker room. I'm not sure how good he is for you on the floor and really what they need to be better. 
you always want to be good in the locker room, but they, but that has, but that doesn't mean anything if you if they're as lousy as they are on the floor, for Absolutely. lack of a better term. And I like Luke Kasupki, but I don't know if he's really going to make that big of an impact even next year. I think he's going to be a guy wherever he is. Hopefully, he stays at Kansas State. I'm not hinting that it won't be, but he's not someone that's really going to yeah. be a large contributor until his junior, until his final two years in a program. And, and he could be really good, but I don't think it's going to be until that point. So I would go Selton Miguel, Dejuan Gordon. I mean, I guess Mike McGrow, but if, if Mike McGrow is using the same role he's used next year as this year, I would argue I'd rather have Luke Kazuki than Mike McGrow because I know, I, know, I know without Mike McGrow in that role, this team's probably even worse than they are now, which is – Insane to think about. Yeah, but but you but don't. Man. But I don't think you need Mike McGurl if you have Selton Miguel because you would probably put him in that usage rate at that point. Um, I could agree with that, and I would actually prefer that. I'd prefer because that I think because... Selton has a chance to be a pretty good creator once he matures a little bit more uh-huh. and isn't making the same poor decisions that he is right now, which is just young mistakes. Yeah. That's all it is. So I because I, I still think Selton can be really good in that role. So I'd say Selton. They want man. I. I'm running that's out of guys. After that, yeah, that, that's Rudy, the, but Rudy see, that, that, and that's, that, and that's the problem. That's why Bruce Weber's in the dilemma that he is, is because he, he there's not a whole lot in the cupboard that you can that we can immediately say, hey, this this will make next year better. Yeah, and that's why everyone's also wondering about Bruce Weber's future because how much better can they honestly be next year? And that, that's a good, it's a fair question to ask. And so you, yeah, it's just to come up before not including Nigel and Davion. And that's the problem. Uh, I, I, the, the problem is I can't. And I, I no, think, exactly. I think there's four total on this team. That's why next year looks very bleak, especially I would with guys put, like Pack and Bradford. And you're right. Probably put Luka Suki in there as the next guy, but um, even he's not going to have much. No, of he hasn't he, shown it. He hasn't proved anything. Yeah, yet, even, so. he's, he's not He's not ready enough to make that much of a difference next year. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think he'd be a solid piece, but but no. still on a horrible team. Like yeah. That's, yeah. He's not ready enough. No. He, he's not. he could be that Christian Brown type guy at some point, but it's not going to happen as soon as next year. I think junior or senior. Or yeah. end of sophomore year when, you know, yeah. the end of the season, you could start seeing a lot. Yep. Thank you, little blue stem, for the great questions. Moving on to Brady P08. If you had to pair knuckle fight one Big Twelve head football coach, who are you taking, and what are your odds at winning? I mean, we oh, don't to win, so we're trying to win. Yeah, if I'm trying to win, bare knuckle Miles, fight, right? He's yeah, a, he's old. And yeah, that seems he pretty. Does, yeah, seems, less miles to get a win. Now th- that seems like cheating. So let's try to come up with one that isn't less miles. Who do we not like? Well, uh, no, you've got to pick someone that you can beat in a fight. Okay, if if, if less miles is cheating, I. I you're not going to beat Matt Campbell in a fight. No. You're not going to meet, beat Gundy in a fight. I don't care. No, no, no he's going to cheat to win. <laughs> yeah. uh, probably Gary Patterson. I mean, And Lincoln Riley's in shape. Maybe Gary Patterson. Yeah. I think Neil Brown's got a little punk in him. I think I could beat Neil Brown. Oh, okay. <laughs> you say Neil Brown is your news? A little, he's got a little punk. I think Dave Aranda could whip some, whip oh, some yeah. ass. Oh, he'd be probably the <laughs> toughest out of all. Dave Aranda or Matt Campbell. And Chris Kleiman Cl- would be tough. Kleiman, because he could probably punch hard. Uh-huh. Um, this is a good question. Sark is probably tough, I would say. He, he seems like a tough dude as yep. well. Yep. So, no, that that's a good question. I don't know about Matt Wells. He's probably, I think, on the bottom three with, with I mean, bottom four with Les Miles. Neil Brown. Neil Brown and, and Gary, Gary Patterson. Patterson. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, thank you, Brady P08. Uh, K Styles, little Griff, the dog, wants to say hi to us because we're getting excited about these questions. Kyle... Uh, K Style seventy nine mm-hmm. asks a couple questions. Will Jarcadier Jarcardier Wright have a bigger role next season? <sighs> we'll see. I don't, I don't know. It's still a little bit to be determined. I think Skyler did mention him as maybe a guy that they could rely on during his press conference this past week. But I mean, I, I think there's a chance that I would still want to take Deuce Vaughn over him, Keon Mosey over him, and Joe Irvin over yeah. him, and that's three guys right there. Absolutely. I, the one interesting thing, and I mean, you realize this, uh, if you're on our message board, you know this already. The weight gain that, that J- Jacardier Wright has gained makes me think maybe he has been in the weight room and yeah. getting huge. Well, yeah, I'd like to know because he, he's up to 231 yeah. now, according to the K-State roster. If that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Yeah, that'll be interesting. But if Skyler's bringing it up, it makes me think maybe he's maybe he's turned into one of those running backs that you're like, uh, I'm scared to even yeah. try to tackle him. 
Um, with Skyler back, will we see a greater production out of the wide receivers and tight ends? I, I, I think you're going to. I know, no offense to Will Howard, but I, I yeah. yeah, I do think the passing game just looks better with. Yeah, and I'm not saying Skylar Thompson is a world beater because I'm not. I'm kind of in the middle of that uh, po- very polar yeah. debate that's often on the boards mm-hmm. and in the communities and everything about how good Skylar Thompson actually is. I, I get some people think he's really really good, mm-hmm. some people think he's not. I'm I'm kind of in the middle, but I still tend to think it's an upgrade over what we saw the last five games absolutely i would say specifically to this question i think there's no doubt in my mind wide receiver production gets amplified tight end production is going to be interesting because without briley moore that was a key piece for will howard it was a safety blanket um but if if bebe that uh, that's not what i want to name him as because Mm -hmm. and what they call him because i'm not uh, you can say his name but him if, if he can step up then tight ends could be big with skyler but Losing Bradley Moore was huge regardless. Yeah, we'll see if Malik Knowles can stay healthy because obviously he hasn't really mm-hmm. shown uh, any. Dalton shown any. <laughs> he, hasn't, uh, he hasn't shown any uh, semblance of uh, a reason to make you feel confident that he will. Yeah. And then Shabastin's obviously coming off a knee injury as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, who will be the surprise emerging players on each side of the ball? Yeah, that's a good question. Surprise, I, I guess... For me, I'll say Joe Irvin, just uh-huh. because I think people forget about him. Um, I think Taylor Potier might start, so yeah. I think that. But maybe that's not a surprise enough for people. Maybe Sammy Wheeler just becomes an All Big Twelve player at some point. Uh, I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, Skyler, uh, Jalen Travis, Skyler, is tough, but that's Skyler uh, brought up Jalen Travis. We've heard good things about Jalen mm-hmm. Travis. That's a freshman wide receiver so that maybe that's a name but i would go joe Irvin. i think yeah i, thought, I think so too i think no the, one has seen anything from him yet but. yeah and i really liked what i saw from him yeah. as a freshman i know everyone fell in love with jacardia right because he looks like this big bulldozer mm-hmm. back that some of the fan base still clings on to that yeah. style but i thought joe Irvin was a better back his freshman year than jacardia right i agree um defensively that's a good question i'm trying to think trying to think trying to you think throw out tj smith but maybe that's not much of a surprise and, and who knows what happens of, with his injury yeah probably not much of a de- surprise um and, and then obviously yeast and brents aren't going to be surprises we we expect them to come in and play big time right away echo boy doe was big time last year uh who's a guy that I mean, could Anna I, DK I, or I, would, I, I would say if, uh, if I would take one, I might take Anna DK. Yeah. Felix okay. Anna DK. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I think that's where you got to go because that they showed a lot of promise but didn't play a ton last year mm-hmm. and were moved around a bunch. And I think they'll be used more on the outside this year, like you said earlier, and that could help a lot in their development. Uh, what part of the country would you like to see us recruit more in? Hmm. How about California? I mean, no, I don't like. It, no, yeah. I don't think they should. I think they probably Ohio or Michigan just <laughs> go up there and yeah. see our families. No, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's any one spot where I think they're leaving a lot to be desired. Uh-huh. Maybe they should do Oklahoma more, but it sounds it feels like they're starting to again. And they're and they're jumping in Arkansas for the first time ever too, mm-hmm. which is yeah, to which see. that's probably going to turn out as much as Kansas. Yeah. So, yeah. Scott Wildcat, our buddy Scott, has a bunch of questions for us. Starts us off with, would it surprise you more if Wayne Jones was an average Big 12 linebacker or if Munoz was an above average Big 12 linebacker? Would it, so which would be the bigger surprise? Yes, Wayne Jones or Munoz. Wait, a- average Wayne Jones? Both average or, Wayne Jones or, or above average, average Munoz. Munoz. The, the surprise to me would probably be average Wayne Jones. I agree. He was just, he wasn't a great tackler already at the safety position, and that's something even more important that you got to do at the linebacker position. And I just don't see it happening unless he's gained a bunch of weight and gotten even better at the fundamentals of football. Mm-hmm. Um, should K-State only award transfer tight ends to number – Zero on offense. Yeah, because Briley was <laughs> yep. zero. Now Bebe zero. So yeah, maybe it looks nice. It looked amazing on Briley. I'm sure it'll look great on Bebe as well. Uh, gun to your head. Who do you predict is the starting nickel on game one versus Stanford in Arlington? Uh, someone that has yet to be added. I, I bet. I have a feeling starting nickel is the transfer they haven't added yet. Okay. Um, do you think in person Big Twelve media days will happen this summer? 
my guess is it's the last time we don't have in-person media days, but it, that's the kind of the threshold where it's possible. We're not going to have in-person spring football or else that would have already been announced. Yeah, no, we're not going to have uh, any, all of spring football availability is going to be virtual. In-person Big 12 media days could be the first thing that isn't virtual. Absolutely. It could be, but I would think that they, they might just play it safe and not. I. I agree with you. I think next year is when we start seeing spring football being back opened up, and then obviously, I think football games will have much more attendance, mm-hmm. and and there'll be a much more appetite for it. And I do think you'll see full schedules played, and close to or maybe full stadiums. We'll see, mm-hmm. hopefully, um, maybe in certain parts of the country at least, and certainly this one, if that's to be the case, is probably the first ones that would. But I just think that that's going – I just wonder what, you know – I mean, it's going to be tough when everyone puts all their guard – puts their entire guard down. I don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah, I agree. Um, do you think it's realistic to think that K-State basketball can be big enough of a winner in the transfer market this offseason to get them near the bubble next season? It would, that's what if, if let's say Bruce Weber is retained and we don't know if we don't know that he will or won't. Mm-hmm. So this is the hypothetical when Bruce Weber returns. The only way that he can win enough next year to make it even close to stomaching that season is to be a huge player in the transfer market. Yep. And I, I don't know that they can. They He's, really they never they have really, been. They really never shown that knack of being able to do so. Even when they have tried here and there, they weren't successful. And then other times they just didn't care to try. Exactly. The best the best example of them ever being successful in the transfer market is Justin Edwards, and that's Bruce's first or second year in the recruiting cycle. So uh, when yeah, when he got the job, and there was that one year they went after it and they missed on everyone. They missed yeah. on Anthony Tark, who mm-hmm. didn't end up being that good. They missed on Matthew Moyer, who I think went to Vanderbilt. They mm-hmm. missed on Parker Stewart, who went and yep, played for his father at yep. UT Martin, and, and then they missed, missed him, him again. again. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, but there was like four or five that year that they did actually chase. And Mark Smith was another one yep. that they could have had. And he's I balling think, in Missouri. He's balling in Missouri, and I think they actually made the decision not to pursue him. So that shows both. Both examples are indicated there. Sometimes they cho- choose not to, and yeah. sometimes they d- just miss. And they yep. missed on guys like Moyer and Parker Stewart, and they chose not to on someone like Mark Smith yep. when they could have had him. To give them a benefit of the doubt this season, if they are retained, I could see them jumping more into it because of the landscape, and depending on guys leaving, they might be forced to. But then again, how successful are they really going to be when they weren't successful before? Uh, moving on. Moral victories aren't a thing, but when Nigel is healthy, I've had more fun watching this team than last year. Am I wrong to have that opinion? Probably. Healthy. I think. I, I mean, I, Nigel is the most exciting player to watch on either of these two teams last year and this year. Yes, exactly. But in general, last year's team was still much better to watch because they were more competitive. I'm going to take the other side on this and agree with Scott because the way I see it, last year pissed me off over and over and over again strictly because of how many times and kind of wish definitely wish he was on the team now but how many times cardi or uh cardi diara turned the ball over it was constantly it was so constant that 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 sticks and burns in my and mind this team turns it over more, more than, than that team. and that does but for some reason i mean i had high way high expectations for i know that team but, last but, year. but this team still turns it over more than that team did and that team could at least win ball games well, in and three games them. in conference it's not that and much they better. didn't get blown out eight times in a row and they like, had and they like had double digits. And they had plethora of they had plethora you're right that's that's so I, true. I mean you can't stomach getting losing by 30 every night it is true it is true i guess my my thing about it is just thinking about texas tech because yeah they got blown out by 20 again by tech even though it was still not a pretty uh, they game. Have, when's the last time they played a single digit game that wasn't that wasn't a and m tcu and that was that was the that was that was the first conference game starting the losing streak that they're on right now it's awful oh yeah so but I, I i'm mean, still gonna agree with scotty here i don't care what you say man well, there's no way that's more stomachable <laughs> You can't you can't lose that badly that many times. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, shoot. I mean, I mean, Nigel Pack is the the player that is the most stomachable to watch because he's actually fun to watch. But in terms of teams, last year's team might have been like a complete mess, and I get that. But you at least thought you might win a game 
every night that you went into a building for the most part. No, no doubt. You went into every game thinking, hey, they can win. No mean, doubt. You don't feel like But that. I guess that's what I mean, makes me th- even, to that point, makes it more fun for me knowing, oh, they're going to fucking freaking lose anyway. <laughs> 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 they're going to lose anyway. Well, so, that doesn't make it more fun. So, uh, but They're going to lose anyway? You just took the fun out of it. Me, For me, Winning it's like, is okay, I'm going to watch what's on the floor. But that's the thing. They didn't win last year when I expected, oh, they're going to win. So that's even less fun for but, me. But I still like the I thought that you might win rather than you don't have a freaking chance. <laughs> We're going to agree to disagree on this one, buddy. But I, we, we could fight with Scott about How it. How many times have you predicted 20-point losses? You're right, dude. And yet here I am still <laughs> saying. And, but that's with, with Nigel Pack in the lineup. That's what I'm saying. I think because you have to, when he was I, out, they were. That's when blowouts were. I know, out. but that's why I think you have to separate the player from the team in this argument. That's what I would do. Nigel Pack, I'll take him over both um, over anyone on both teams, but I still take last year's team. True, but he he prefaces it with Nigel being healthy and he's in the game. So I'm I'm gonna I take separate it all for what it is. And you can do that, but Scott's gonna be pissed at you at the peanut next time we go. No, you're dropping f bombs. <laughs> <laughs> FCC is gonna kill us. Shh. <laughs> Hush. <laughs> okay, next, uh, Scott says, if K-State was a right side of the bubble team last year, would there be serious conversations about Bruce's future right now? Um, if they were on the right side of the bubble, so, so maybe... If they li- got into the tournament. They got right, into, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if they got into the NCAA tournament, then even as bad as this year's been, he'd be fine. He'd be fine, absolutely. Um, would you cast... This is his last question until I think he's got... One more later. Who would you cast from a non-coaching employees from the K-State Beat Media to form an eight-person real-world reality TV show over the summer? Uh, I mean, that's eight people. That's that's too much, Scott. We don't got time for that to think about all that. I mean, Next. Taylor Bratt's going to be a part of that, obviously. But I mean, that's that's the nine the mind, the name that co- jumps out first. I can give you one name that I want in reality TV out of coaching employees, and that's going to be Taylor Bratt. I mean, whoever you want after that, we can discuss on the board later. Uh, Black Emaw says, uh, has several questions here. Does the coach mess move to wide receiver room affect recruiting at all? Uh, we don't know yet. I, I, it probably won't affect it a ton if it does. I, I think it'll be negligible. I mean, because I like the receivers they got last year. Brent Hawkins, mm-hmm. R.J. Garcia. Yeah, no, I agree. Um yeah, I, I, I agree with that completely. And it seems like this this staff does a really good job of everyone recruiting everyone, depending on if it's in your area, and then they'll bring in the position coach after if if for instance, you know, Connor Riley's uh recruiting a tight end out of Kansas City or, or front neck. Um does the coach mess move oh yeah, so just do that one. Which of the linebackers outside of Fletcher, Deuce, and Eric Munoz Will be the biggest contributors, and he says, "Sorry if I'm forgetting somebody obvious." No, I don't those, think he is those are the obvious. probably the main is it Adam Moore? three. Austin Moore. Austin Moore. Yeah. Yep. Uh, who who do I think is going to be basically who's the best linebacker of those three? It should be Daniel Green. We'll see. Yeah, I agree. Yep, he's physically gifted. He's just going to have to put his mind to the game, and I think he could be a could be a big time performer. Any more position changes you see coming down before the season starts? Uh, probably means player or coach, but I don't. I don't think unless they move someone to nickel. Mm-hmm. But that's the only thing I can really think of right now. Yeah, maybe someone moves to nickel, but yep. that's about it. We talked about this guy a little bit earlier. I think you put him on a third on the rankings of transfers that you think will have impact. Why no talk of Timothy Horn and prediction of his role? Black email asks. Uh, prediction of his role. I mean, I think he's going to. Be a contributor. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been less talk about him because we haven't really talked to any defensive tackles since the season ended, and he didn't. He was busy and couldn't um, yep. arrive and do a media availability like some of the other transfers did. There, there's nothing really against it. But just I think he's just going to be. A, I wonder if he's just going to be a depth piece. We'll see. Absolutely. Uh, in your home, would you rather have all carpet or hardwood? Give me hardwood. Hardwood. So, by your apartment here. Uh, most expensive clothing item you own. Ooh, you probably have some. You probably yeah, have some in your closet. I got closet. a suit jacket. It's pretty up there. Yeah, like a like a like a suit. Like a in yeah, general. I think that'd be mine too. Um, 
suit jacket. I have a watch. It's pretty expensive. Ooh, a little rolly? A little rolly, rolly, no, rolly? You, you've seen it. I forget what it is. Um, I think like an Invicta or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think it's... I mean, I'm not going to say how much it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a little expensive. And then... Um, what else do I... I don't really have anything that a I watch can, and jump a suit. To me. Well, well, and, and my pea coat. My yeah. pea, I have my pea coat's almost two hundred dollars. Wow. So, yeah, but that was I got it like four years ago. See, most of my expensive ones were probably gifts from my mom or sister. Or that even, you never wear. Worn that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I really, I really wear. I do have a pea coat that it needs to get worn, but it just needs to go to the tailor, and it hasn't done yet. Mm. Uh, last question from Black Emo: Would any transfer that gets added? from here on out be just depth pieces or could they realistically have enough time to complete uh and st- to compete and start i mean jordan brown played a mm. lot and he was not a, a spring ad and mm. and if they would have not if they would have had enough room they could have added william bradley king over the summer last year and he would have been a, a starter or a defensive end to be mm. quite honest that he's that good he played a lot for baylor and probably going to be in the NFL draft. So, no, I think you can add someone still, and they can still start because there's going to be guys that come go into the portal that's they're still pretty good, and that's why you save a few spots still because someone like Jordan Brown could pop open. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they want to add someone like that, especially a nickel. Like mm-hmm. I said, I've said it like three or four times now because a lot of these questions do go hand in hand a bit, but they still need a starting nickel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Moving on to thank you, Black Ema, for all the great questions. Our friend, our our contributor. I mean, you know, we talk to him all the time. Not the fake MV Mason Voth has a good question for us. Mm. You and you and Dy constantly use gifts from Gilmore Girls. This can't be accidental. He thinks that uh, we're closet fans and should discuss the show with his wife. I've never seen it in my life. I have, for some reason, vivid memories. Can't think of one episode. Never really watched one from start to finish in full. But vivid memories from my childhood of it just being on before I quickly changed the channel to something way better. No. We just use gifts, man. Doesn't matter where they're from. If they're funny, then it's, if Gilmore Girls somehow is a funny gift, we'll use it. Uh, JJM22 says, if you could add one thing uh, to the current football staff, it can be a coach or a recruiting staff, what position would you add and why? Hmm. Recruiting staff. Yeah, me too. Because the only coaching thing you would add is what special teams, and that's shown to not necessarily be nece- necessary. Uh, yeah, they have 10 coaches. Didn't they all coach positions? Yeah. yeah, I don't, yeah. And, the, and the special teams did really well to start the season. So uh, over under number of players from this B-ball team who leave after the year, I'll set it at, it at three and a half. I'm going under on that personally. Three and a half? Well, wait, wait, wait. A players who leave, man, that might be over actually. I was thinking of just strictly freshmen, but man, I, I think it could be over. It's probably over. Yeah. Just uh, has Bruce had that many years where it's under? No. no. Uh, fact or fiction a running back will rush for over 750 yards next year, and Thompson throws for 2,500 yards. If Skyler stays healthy, 2,500 seems attainable. Mm hmm. Um, cause he was going to, yeah, he's been close to that before I think with, with yeah, 750 is probably a lot for, with how they do the running backs. It's true. And they're going to get deuce the ball a lot and he's not going to get 750. So it'd have to be someone else to get 750 rushing yards. And that's not going to happen. Cause deuce is not going to run for 750. He might get a thousand over. He's going to have over a thousand probably combined purpose, rushing yeah. and receiving you would think. So, I mean, that really takes away 750 for a running backs going to be tough. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And for some reason, yeah, if it's not going to be Deuce, it's not going to be anyone because Deuce yeah. is the one that comes to mind. But you're right. He does it the way they use him is a lot more like a lot in the passing game compared to what they use him in the running game. Um, it is more likely. Is it more likely we see an assistant B-ball coach leave if Bruce is given another year or Bruce leave after this season is over? What's more likely? Probably Bruce leaving yeah. or retiring, whatever way one is. I, I, I don't think anything is decided or no. determined just yet. I just don't there's see... there's a lot of moving parts, yeah. but I think uh, no, no, I don't. Yeah, Weber's. I think it is what it is. Like if I don't think he's going to be given a, yeah a, a a shot with a different staff that doesn't really make as much sense to me. Mm-mm. So and when you look at the assistants, I mean. After a year like this, they're not going to be getting plucked out every which way. I mean, Shane Southwell would be the one. He's got the youth. 
Um, he's coached, you know, a few years here and there, but still not enough experience. I think if he were to be back next year, the same staff would be back. Um, Jay Compton 10 uh, asks, does the basketball team see more attrition if Bruce stays or leaves? Oh, man, that is a good question. I think it's about the same. Yeah, I think it is about the same, too. I, I really don't. And uh, it's, I'm not copping out there. I just think Bruce Weber's had a history of high attrition at Kansas State for one reason or another, right? And if he leaves, I still think that there's going to be guys that probably need to find roles elsewhere. Yeah. I, I think it's probably a decent number in, in both situations. But actually, now that I think about it, I think a new, if if he was gone and a new coach did come in, I think he might want to turn over the roster quite a bit himself. Yeah. So I think it might be more if Weber isn't here, but maybe that's not a bad thing either. Yeah, I mean, this, that, that's a really good question. I think you laid it out pretty well. Uh, Scott Wildcap asks, he's uh, yeah, he's back. Uh, put together a three-on-three basketball team using the current football team, and then what three guys in the basketball team would you want in your 7v7 seven, seven, seven seven football team? So football players that are good at basketball, three of them. Skyler's good. Um, I wish Joaquin Gill was still on the team. He'd be an easy answer. Uh, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who else is good at basketball on this year's is? team besides Skyler. Skyler. I feel like there's someone else we've heard before, but yeah, Ooh. can't think of. We're it. we suck. Yeah, we next do. next question, yeah. Scott. Don't hate us. I'm sorry, Scott. Uh, we're gonna skip this one. <laughs> Farm Cat asks, "What's your favorite color?" I'm going green. I don't have. How about do you have a do you have a favorite? <laughs> From DJ Ward at twenty forty, have a favorite Yo Mama joke? <laughs> I don't actually. Favorite color is probably like a charcoal gray. Okay, charcoal gray. My f- okay, yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, Yo Mama joke? No, I'm not funny. So I uh, here's one I, from my childhood. I actually thought of it in the shower before I came over here because uh, I wanted to answer this question to the best of my ability. Uh, Yo Mama's so fat when she stepped on the the scale, she she read her own phone number. Oh. oh. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, that was a good one from my childhood. But anyway, Tom25 has a question for us. Back my on track. Number, my phone number starts with a nine. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> that's uh, eight, eight digits, seven digits, seven digits. Wait, no, that's ten, ten digits. <laughs> I'm so bad at math. I can't even think of yeah. ten digits. That's a lot Next. of weight. After uh, Tom25 asks, after Skyler, what QB expects to see taking snaps? Uh, who starts? Okay, so we'll start with that one. After Skyler, what QB do you expect to be taking snaps? Oh, I there's no way to know. I no inside information here because I don't think that's really determined yet. So don't take this as gospel. Like I'm hearing something because I'm not. I would lean Rubley. Wow. Okay. Yeah, see, I, I'll go the other way. I would lean Will Howard just because he has that experience from last year. But I also like that you're saying Rubley because. Um, I, I, I liked Will Howard from last year, but he left some to be desired, and I wouldn't be one mind seeing if seeing another uh, seeing Rubley, you know, show out in his first year for K State. Mm-hmm. Um, who stars? And that's only in blowouts because Skyler's not going to get injured this year. Uh, who starts next to Deuce in the backfield? Can Wright be bring in the Thunder? He says. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I write this all the time. I still think it's Joe Irvin. That's me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think you're you're right on that. I'm trying to think. Is yeah, Jarkady right? I I think Joe Irvin's the right. Right, call there Irvin too. Mosey to me, Wright's number four still. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of like the way the backfield's going to look this year compared to last year when it comes to the depth. Um, does defense take a step forward, and if so, how big of a step? Oh no, problem. I mean, I. I think the first question of this podcast was probably the better one for that. I think it looks similar to the defense in the first half rather than the second half. I mm-hmm. think the second half, the defense looked very poor because the secondary fell apart. The first half of the year, the defense was getting shutouts and yep. uh, on certain halves, and they playing good for a half against Oklahoma. and Top team in barely, the Big 12 on defense. Yeah, that for, for, the, yeah. yeah for, there was a four- or five-game stretch there where they were a top-four defense in the Big 12, and then it obviously got untethered really quickly. But I think it'll look more like the first-half defense in a second. Absolutely. Um, what do you make of all the talk to keep Bruce from Gene? 
Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, you basically just uh, wondering about all the yeah, time yeah. I, I, and I know the interviews being done and taking place, and the stories being written, and mm-hmm. the podcast being conducted with Gene Taylor, and he's saying what he's saying. I've said this on the board probably fifty times in the last two weeks. I don't think anything that Gene Taylor says right now matters. Absolutely, there's just so many things that could still happen, um, and. If, if Weber is done, and he kind of points it out at the end of the post, this season, um, you know, take it what, is it, what it what it is, you know, behind the scenes, but very likely if he's done, it's being, you know, centered around him retiring uh, more so than, but still, at the end of the day, there's so many options. He could, could be he could be back. He could be blatantly fired. He could be just retiring, you know, under uh, just anything. There's so many options. Nothing really matters right now, and everything Gene has been saying is, you know, we plan on having him back, but let's assess after the season's over. So there's a lot of things in play still. D- Derek L58 keeps us moving on. Uh, has Coach Kleiman stepped away from Twitter? Not a huge deal, but I've noticed that he hasn't tweeted or liked tweets since the West Virginia loss, so he was curious. Um, I, I haven't noticed. I, I, I haven't noticed either, and I would say I don't know that he's made a – conscious decision to do it i just don't think he's ever been active mm-hmm. with it i mean probably my favorite poster on the board no offense to anyone else but tx chimes in with a good question uh he says i thought Knowles was supposed to be a transfer winky face how big of an impact does him returning have on this team next year could be huge if he stays healthy and that's always the qualifier when it comes to malik absolutely um Hopefully he stays healthy. Yeah, because he's got the talent. Um, as he keeps his head straight, I think he can be a big-time player. Just haven't seen it for long stretches yet, so you're hoping this year can be the year. Uh, TJ Warda24 comes back in and says, any thoughts on the new Twitter awards from football team? That's interesting he asked. I think that. it's just a part of the, the them assessing and reassessing and, and trying to foster – Yep. and guide things in the direction that they want. You have to reinforce the behavior you want to see. Yeah. I personally don't care for it. I'm just going to say it, but I also think it's good for, yeah, if it's good for the, the, the locker room, that's amazing, and I think probably most fans love it. They'll take any content they can get. For me personally, explain yourself, and then I'll like it more, but it's just they're just throwing out awards, and it's like, oh, oh, the prize, the prize winner. <laughs> Prize Christian fighter. Duffy, prize fighter. So he must have been yeah. pretty good this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he probably knocked someone out, man. They got the boxing gloves on. They were ready. Yeah. <laughs> a few more to go here. Purple South says, not that we will see Deuce-like performances, uh, but are there any true freshmen who have the potential for a breakout season? Hmm. Brennan Hawkins getting here early. That'll help him. It's probably it's Pritchard. probably going to be guys that were freshmen last year that didn't play mm-hmm. or didn't play much because of COVID. So there's no or like Will Swanson, yeah, that comes to mind. Uh-huh. So I think it's going to be guys more like that. I don't know. At least I haven't heard yet of any true freshmen that can be mm, okay. Now we're seeing something. Yeah. You know, I. Just, I don't know if we're there yet. You just don't see it on the offensive line. Obviously, quarterback's not a situation this year. But, I mean, and Andrew Langang and Jake Rubley are both big-time yeah, additions. I, but you just, yeah, you don't those see are it probably, those To me, they were the top two recruits, but yeah. they're probably not going to play. Um, mm-hmm. Braden Wood, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting one. But they still, yeah, they have a lot of good depth back there right now. So, yeah. Hard to see. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, he asks, what will be the pr- primary strength and weakness of the 2021 football team? Primary strength. Uh, if you want, if, I, if I had to go macro way, I'd say strength. I think the offense is going to be decent, and I think the defense is going to be average to below average. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if I go a little bit more micro on it, I would say that I have a feeling that they're going to be able to run the ball pretty well this year. And... Uh, and I have a feeling that they could struggle at times to stop the run. Mm-hmm. But, but then again, that's not really as problematic in the Big 12. Absolutely. But it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. I'm, I'm excited for football, but we still have a long ways away. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you laid it out. Uh, who is the weakest recruit in the football uh, on the football staff? 
weakest, weakest recruiter. recruiter. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to reserve the right not to answer this because yeah. th- that'll just. I don't think it. That good. if you guys like information, that's a <laughs> that's a fast way to stop it. Yep, absolutely. Um, S R S R E Cat. Uh, well, shoot, it looks like that's actually... Yeah, SRE Cat says, With the roster becoming a little clearer now, who do you see at the nickelback role now that Jones is a LB and we seem to have no specific player from last year's three deep at that position? And you did say earlier you think uh, it's going to uh, be a yeah, transfer. I, it's going to be... That's why they still need a transfer defensive back because they don't have one. Absolutely. Um, leading AMA... And that's just why I think losing Will Jones was big because he would fit that spot really yeah. well. Um, AMS thirty three ninety nine asks leading receiver in twenty twenty one. Malik Knowles, I think okay. I, I think he figures it out. I was gonna go with that too, but I'll be different. Say Sebastian Taylor, and that's probably one of those. Two. Yeah, it's one of those two. Um, do you do we get two tight ends with two hundred yards receiving? I mean, Sammy Wheeler and Bebe, I mean, those would be the two. Oh yeah, maybe Fox. Maybe yeah, I guess Fox could... Swanson. I, I'm going to say yes. Okay. I like it. I like it. I'm going to be different and say no. Uh, how many yards rushing total for Deuce and his backup, Irvin? And he says in parentheses, Irvin question. How many? Say it again. How many rushing, uh, how many total yards rushing for Deuce and his backup? So I can see Deuce get about 500 five, six. It's in someone else getting five, six. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. About a thousand to eleven hundred or twelve hundred. Um, Paddle King asks, "How much money did you win or lose on the Super Bowl?" I didn't bet. I only, um, been, I think I made a dollar. I think, so. yeah, because I think everything else was a wash. So I think I made like a dollar or two. Okay. Uh, Oiler Cat 2, just a few more here to finish this up. Oiler Cat 2 asks, any update on the indoor facility and practice field? Yeah, I, I gave an update like a month ago. I'm trying to remember, but I think it's it's been, a, it's been funded and they're going to start. Um... Uh, I forget when the, the construction for it will start, but I think it'll be supposed to be done summer before the 2023 season or 22. I'd have to look it up. But yeah, I made it. There was a post in an article about it. Um, and so I, I kind of forget the details off the mm-hmm. top of my head, but it's definitely in the works. And, and I don't know if it's supposed to be done. I think it's summer before 23 mm-hmm. season, but I'm not sure. Uh, looks like Farm Cat was asking if the the show's on Spotify. Yes, it's on Spotify, Apple, uh, pr- pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast. You can find our show. Just search the KSO show or Case Down Line KSO show, whatever you do, you should be able to find us. Uh, Back Pain asks, what in K State Athletics can I be optimistic or excited about? Let's, I guess, each give one answer. Or something. Uh, d- a few. Uh- a regular football season, and I think they're going to make at least a bowl game. So, I mean, and I do think they're going to land some of the in-state guys. And I, I mean, people are going to hate me here to say it, but get excited for Arlington and see Stanford. Uh, I don't know. This should be a fun game in general. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, get excited for the Kansas State-Stanford exactly. game. Uh, I, I, I still think that they have a chance to be pretty solid. If you can't be excited for anything less than 10 wins, then you're probably not going to be excited this year. Mm-hmm. But I, I think just because you might have – Probably going to have a very close to a normal football season, which I think will have at least seven yep. to eight wins. Yeah. And part of that it, answer, too, normal football season means, I mean, it's, it's going to be better culture than last year, too, which was yeah, a big that, problem. Yeah, and, and I meant like in yeah. terms of and like yeah, interruptions. Yeah, I, I realize that yeah. because that's the thing is it's normal year means a lot of good things for this football team. I think so. AMS3399 asks, my boss claims KU will be a bowl team in two years, <laughs> no. i.e. the 2023 no. football no. steeping. He no. says, how stupid is that? No, is stupid? very stupid. It must be just a, a KU fan, huh? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Well, last ones from Nelio. Looks like he's got three of them. Nelio2 asks, can you see a scenario with this fall where Whit Mitchum, Carver Willis, and Paler... Taylor Potier, uh, all start along our O line together. No, because I think Christian Duffy is going to get a starting spot at tackle. Yeah, prize fighter, man. Um, yeah, I, I think 
that yeah it, it, I guess is Whit Mitchum a tackle? Yeah. Yeah. So which one of those two, which, Whit Mitchum or Carver Willis, would you? Because Potier is on the inside. Yeah. So which of those two, Carver Willis or Whit Mitchum, do you think you'd see a better chance of seeing? I guess Carver Willis is probably the right choice mm-hmm. just because he played last year. Okay. But I don't know if that's a precursor of what's to come. Absolutely. Uh, is incoming wideout RJ Garcia coming in as a vertical threat, or is he more of a possession type wide receiver? Uh, I mean, he's not some giant, <laughs> and I wouldn't say a burner. I mean, your vertical threat's probably Malik. Yeah. And I doubt, but he's not Philip Brooks either. Mm-hmm. He's in between. Yeah. He's, mm-hmm. It's all dude. Yeah. Last one for this fun podcast. We had a good time doing it. Uh, I see we get Nevada in week three next fall. Have any scoop on what they might bring to Manhattan as an opponent? Hmm. Nevada. They yeah. have a decent coach. If he's still there, Jane Orvell. I know he was up for other jobs. He might not be. Um, he kind of in came- relation to Pete Norvell? You mean Mike? Mike Norvell. <laughs> Mike from Florida State. I don't think so. J- okay. Jay Norvell is a lot older. Pete Norvell. Jay, Nor- <laughs> Jay Norvell's in his... Yeah. I think okay. I want to say he's in his 50s. He, pl- I, he, I think he was with Kirk Ferentz. He's in that coaching uh-huh. tree. So that's where he uh, disseminated from. But uh, I, I don't know any... I can't say I know a ton about Nevada. I yeah. don't do a whole lot of research <laughs> on the Nevada Wolf Pack in, in February. But I would say that if Jay Norvell is still their coach... I know he was up for other jobs, and I'm struggling to remember if he took any of them. But they'll they'll be okay. They're they're not, they're not going to be as good as Bo Buffalo would have been this past year. If I were to guess, I would say Nevada's basketball team as of late has been more has been better than what the football program is. But that is coming from someone that football has team very too, little. Yeah, football team usually makes a bowl though. Okay, okay, all right. Well, I stay corrected. Uh, that was a fun KSO show for Derek Young, Grant Flanders. We answered all your questions. Subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Um, and then you can start a- uh, asking us questions just like this and get shouted out on the podcast. Always a great time. I'm about to head to this uh, Texas game, which we did not talk anything about. Um, so it, this this podcast should have shelf life for really until football season. Honestly, tons of football questions uh, and a few basketball here and there. But... We appreciate your time. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on the KSO Show. And don't forget to do one thing. Tell your friends.